Another thing, I'd love to get to this Dodger game tomorrow night. I called everybody I know. Did? Yep. Nothing? Nothing. Everybody at Dodger Stadium, top to bottom. Nobody's got tickets. It's going to be some game. I know. I want to go, too. Los Angeles, California. Dodger Stadium. May 12, 2003. 56,000 people fill the stadium to the brim. It's an exciting game between home team, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and visiting team, the Atlanta Braves. The game is tied 4-4, and fans are on the edge of their seat as the game enters its ninth inning. But little do they know that 20 miles away in Sun Valley, a murder has been committed. A young girl by the name of Martha Puebla has been found on the side of the road just outside her house. She's been shot multiple times in a drive-by shooting and is pronounced dead at the scene. She was only 16. The police don't get there in time, and her killers get away. But they didn't go unseen. An eyewitness catches a look at one of the killers and gives a description to the police. He describes the suspect as a male between the ages of 19 and 25. He's about 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 10 in height. He was of Hispanic descent, had short hair, a bulky build, and a mustache. The police create a sketch of the suspect and begin their investigation. A few months later, the police find their suspect. His name is Juan Catalan. He is arrested just outside his place of work, taken to the police station, placed in a jail cell, and is charged with murder. But when they arrive at the station, Juan professes his innocence. You could have the wrong person. You're literally identical to this. That's not me. It sure looks a lot like you. That's not me. Please do not do this to me, dude. We're not doing much to you. People have said that it's you. What do you have to say? Well, what can I do? Can I take a lie detector test or something? No. But wait, what evidence do the police have against Juan Catalan to warrant an arrest? Well, for one, he looks like the police sketch described by the witness. And the LAPD have witnesses at the scene who pointed him out in a picture lineup. But what reason would Juan have to kill Martha? Well, it actually has something to do with Martha herself. On May 1st, 2003, over a week before her death, Martha Puebla was to testify in court against a man named Mario. He was a member of the Vineland Boys, a local street gang out of Los Angeles. Mario was convicted of being an accessory to a murder that happened a few weeks prior. The testimony by Martha worked, and Mario was sentenced to life in prison. But the thing is, Mario just so happens to be the brother of Juan Catalan. The story is, is that after Mario was sent to prison, Juan wanted to get back at Martha, so he killed her that night as a form of revenge for locking up his brother. At least, that's the story given by the LAPD. The story that Juan gives, however, is a lot different. He says that he didn't kill Martha Puebla because on the night of her murder, he was at the baseball game mentioned earlier. No one believes him, however. You expect me to believe that. But this is his story, and he is determined to prove it. But in order to do that, he must first provide hard evidence to the court that he was at the game at the time of murder. Does he still have his ticket? He does. But that doesn't prove that he went to the game or that he stayed the whole time. Were there any witnesses to prove that he was at the game? There were. He didn't go alone. He went with his daughter, his cousin, and one of his friends. However, the testimony from his daughter isn't enough, and his cousin and friend, they don't want to testify. Juan is up against the Sun Valley District Attorney. They have a high conviction rate, and due to fear that they might get charged for the murder as well, his cousin and friend don't testify to help Juan. But his cousin doesn't abandon him. Instead, he helps Juan out by getting him a lawyer. His name is Todd Melnick. He doesn't believe that Juan is a murderer and is willing to do anything to prove his innocence 
and fight for his freedom. So the physical evidence mentioned earlier is not enough to help Juan, and others are too afraid to testify. So Todd needs to find hard evidence himself that proves Juan was at the ball game. Maybe someone else saw him there that day. And if not that, what about the TV cameras at the stadium? Not only do they film the game, but sometimes they film audiences in the crowd, which gets shown on TV or even on the Jumbotron. It's a stretch, but it might be their best bet. Todd gets access to the footage from the game that day and begins scouring through hours of footage looking for one man in a sea of 56,000 people. Well, what happened was Fox TV had, you know, broadcast the game. So I had to go through every frame that they showed of every scene of the of the crowd in order to see if I could find one. And I did because I knew where he was sitting, but the uh, resolution wasn't high enough for me to figure out, you know, that that was him um, or for the, you know, the court to know that that was him. Meanwhile, things aren't going well for Juan. Because of the crime he is being charged for, he has been placed in Supermax Security Prison, the most secure level in prison, only accompanied for the highest risk, most dangerous criminals. The criminals there don't take kindly to Juan. He is being accused of murdering a child, and despite his pleas for not committing the crime, the inmates there still make him a target there is the possibility that he could die in prison before he even makes it to court. But even if he gets to court, it's not over for him. The prosecution has been assigned. Her name is Beth Silverman, but she goes by a different name, The Sniper, a name that she has gotten due to her reputation of sending people off to death row. She has never lost a murder case, and she doesn't intend on this one being her first. Do you think that Juan Catalan has any kind of a legitimate alibi at all? No. Todd continues to search through the footage of the baseball game, but ends up with nothing. He needs a different approach. He talks with Juan and tries to see if he can remember anything from that day that can help his case. Juan remembers specific things about the game, such as plays by certain team members and how the Dodgers choked that day, losing to the Braves 11-4. None of this would help in court, though. But he does remember something unique that day. Not far from where he was sitting, he remembers seeing actor and comedian Bob Einstein in the crowd with a bunch of TV cameras filming him and the people around him. Todd took this information and went back to Dodger Stadium and talked with the media relations department. Sure enough, Juan was correct. There was a film crew there that day. It was a crew from the television company HBO. And not far from where Juan and his friends were sitting, they were filming an episode of the American sitcom Curb Your Enthusiasm. Maybe while filming they got a glimpse of Juan at the game. It was a long shot, but it might be the only way to prove his innocence and save him from death row. The episode that they were filming was The Carpool Lane of Season 4, Episode 6. At the time, it had not aired and was still in production. Todd managed to get in contact with the producers of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and they agreed to let him look over the footage. He was back to what he was doing before, scouring through hours of footage looking for one man in a sea of people. But this time, his search would be greatly narrowed down. He checks one tape. Juan's not there. He checks another tape. Juan's not there. He checks another tape. Again, Juan's not there. After hours of searching through and re-watching the footage over and over again, he still has found no trace of Juan on camera. Things seemed hopeless, but Todd doesn't give up. This is the best chance they got at saving Juan's life. He checks another tape. At 
after months of searching, they have it. Definitive proof that Juan really was at the game. But it doesn't end there. Todd checks another tape, and there's Juan again. Todd checks another tape, and there's Juan again. In total, he now has three pieces of video evidence of Juan at the Dodgers game. Todd gave Juan the good news, took the footage from Curb Your Enthusiasm, and brought the evidence to court, ready to prove to everyone that Juan is indeed innocent. But despite the evidence in Juan's favor, the prosecution still tries to charge him. The crime against Martha Pueblo was reported at 10.43 p.m., but the actual murder happened at 10.32 p.m., and the footage of Juan at the Dodgers game was between 8.55 and 9.15 p.m. They argue that even with the footage, he still could have made it to the crime scene with that amount of time. The time it takes to get from Dodgers Stadium to Sun Valley is about 20 to 25 minutes. Todd needed to, once again, find evidence that Juan was at Dodgers Stadium, but this time within a certain time frame. Luckily, he didn't need to look that far for evidence. Juan remembered one last thing he did that night. Shortly after the game ended, he made a phone call to his girlfriend before giving his cousin a ride home. Todd managed to get a hold of Juan's cell phone provider, and they were able to pinpoint that Juan did receive a phone call within the vicinity of Dodgers Stadium that night at 10.12 p.m. There's no way he could have made it to the crime scene in that amount of time. With all the video evidence from Curb Your Enthusiasm and the phone records gathered, Todd presented it to the court. And finally, in January 2004, after being in jail for almost six months, Juan Catalan was found innocent and was finally free to go. But that just leaves a few loose ends. Remember the pictures of Juan from earlier by the witnesses? Well, these photos were actually faked. Two detectives assigned to the case admitted that they delivered false evidence against Juan Catalan in an attempt to charge him for a crime he did not commit. A few years later, in March 2007, Juan would find himself back in court. He filed a civil case against the detectives, the city of Los Angeles, and the LAPD, suing them for misconduct, false imprisonment, and defamation of character. He won the case and received a settlement of $320,000. It doesn't make up for what was done to him, but at least he got some form of justice. What do you think of those two detectives now? You know, it took a while to uh, forgive them for what they did. But I want to say, out of all honesty, that I do forgive them for what they did. You forgive them? Yes. No one should walk around with, with hate in them. You know, that's poison in our bodies that, you know, it doesn't hurt the person you hate. It hurts yourself and it eats away at your soul. So, you know, I sit here with you, Liam, today, honestly saying that, you know, I don't have any hate in me towards them. But what about Martha Puebla? Well, she would also receive justice. In July 2008, the police found the men who were responsible for her death. They were each charged with life sentences with no possibility of parole. These men are serving life. Martha Puebla received justice and Juan Catalan had his life saved. And it was all thanks to Curb Your Enthusiasm. Mm -hmm.